from humble beginnings to learning from your failures to becoming a great success. What is your success story? Chip Baker, The Success Chronicles. What's your definition of success? to you with another episode of the success chronicles and uh i have <laughs> we have coach dwight patrick with us on this episode uh coach patrick and i we worked together at Conroe high school for a while great guy a great man and you know one thing i always you know, truly admired about him was you know he he was blessed and fortunate to do some amazing things you know in coaching but he was always you know, encouraging us, you know, to find ways to get better, you know, and so that was one thing that I really, I really took a liking to that, and I, I incorporated that in everything I did as well, you know, as far as, you know, guys that I was around, you know, try to help out. I remember uh, this one spring, you know, we were going to, and we were almost at every college in the Houston area, yeah. you know, watching spring ball, and you put up like three pages of clinics on the, on the board for us to go to, and Okay, yeah. so you didn't just put them up there, but you were at them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, um, yeah, I was always, you know, I didn't know if I was the smartest guy in the room, so I had to educate y'all to be the smartest guys in the room. You know, I need some help sometimes. You know, on Friday, and you look out there and the head coach is coming your way and you're going, he's going to ask me one of the tough questions I may not have an answer to. You know, and, you know. <laughs> Like I told Ballard, you know, he asked me one time a guy went to Astrodome. He went like 70 yards on us. Uh -huh. And he said, you go that far. I said, that's all he needed. He could have went farther if he didn't need it. You know, <laughs> you know, I needed some guys that were smart around me. Uh, yeah. You know, it was a deal. I wanted to get y'all as smart as y'all could be. There you go. It, it, it helped a little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it helped. I could have some questions. Although sometimes free didn't know it, you know, it was like kind of dead air up there. Sometimes I'd ask the press box, what happened? And he'd be like, oh, come on now, come on free, talk to me, you know. So, but it was all good, you know, everybody, that was a great staff to be on. It, it was. Really was. Everybody, you know, tried to do the, what well, was there for the common good, and that was to make Conroe better. And yeah. that was the best thing. And, and, and there for the kids, it was, it was pretty, it, it was, was good guys. <laughs> That, that was the whole deal. It was, you know, when we started hiring those people, you know, you were one of the first hires. You know, you were right in the door with, with us. And, you, you know, it was all quality people. I mean, those were great people. You know, they're still great men that you'd like to hang around with. You know, sometimes you get on staff and you work with a guy and you go, man, I don't know about that guy. Well, we didn't know about it anyway. But, but, you know, we like being around each other. No and doubt. they contributed and kept the life going. No and doubt. It, that, that was what we did. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that's that's the main thing I've tried to make coaching is make uh, make playing. If you play for me, I want to make it fun. I mean, life's hard, and that's game. You need to make it fun, right. and you, the players need to have fun, and the coaches need to have fun. If something happens and it's funny, it's okay to laugh at it. I mm -hmm. mean, just stop laughing and say, gosh, dog, I, was, I ain't never seen that, you know. And, you know, the kids will all stop, and they'll laugh, and everybody have a good time, and we'll go on. And, you know, they don't need to puff it up and say, oh, come on, let's, I mean, well, it happened and it was funny. Yeah. I trip over the dump, fall down, everybody needs to laugh because it's probably pretty funny, you know. <laughs> but, you know, 
but don't take yourself so serious. You can't enjoy the sport right. and being around kids. That's the they keep you young. I mean, that's the main thing. I did it for thirty eight years, and like I said, when I got down, I left. You know, because you know my wife needed me, but but mm-hmm. it was it's a situation where it's you know you need to do it for the love of the kids, and right. you know, and, and that's that's the main thing. Got to. Yeah. If you, makes, if you could, right, go, <laughs> if you could, just kind of go over uh, your life story. You know, just kind of where you're from and, uh, and 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 those things. I was I was raised by a itinerant coach. In other words, my dad moved about every two or three years when I was growing <laughs> up. You know, and just job to job until he got until he got to uh, uh, Eastern Oklahoma. I was in you. Follow for the longest. I grew up about five years there, so I, that was kind of where I got formulated. And then um, I graduated. Then he moved to Northwest Oklahoma. Uh, my mother was a home ec teacher. My dad was a football coach, mm-hmm. uh, baseball coach, and every other kind of coach he needed, you know. So, and he loved small schools. And uh, and when I got finished playing, they, the guy kind of came by and said, "Hey, uh, you, you know, I took a trip down to OU," and they said, "Well, you're kind of small." Would you like to go to junior college? I said, like, oh, yeah, sure, I guess. So we'll send you to junior college, and we'll come and look at you in three semesters. So I said, okay. So they sent me. I went up to any old junior college, and uh, they walked in, and the coach gave us a fine fire-me-up speech. There was about 175 of us sitting up in the bleachers. And they won the national championship the year before junior college. And wow. he came in there and said, I'm going to keep 35 of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that'll be done each- Two weeks. So best of luck to you, thirty-five. <laughs> and that was it. We went to work, and, and uh, you know, and, and and you know, I never thought about quitting. You know, I was just going to stay. They didn't take my stuff. You know, and they had ways of cutting. That was they had the greatest way of cutting kids in college I've ever heard of. You would go down, and we had old wooden lockers in the back where they had all the, the newbies, all the freshmen. Mm-hmm. And you'd go down, and it was kind of like major league. I guess you'd open that lock. And there'd be an Oklahoma roadmap and an apple sitting in there. And all your stuff's gone. <laughs> so that's how they cut you. There wasn't none of this coming in and saying, well, you know, we appreciate your effort or nothing. Uh-huh. You just locker and there was an apple, there was a roadmap. So, okay, you're on your own. Hit out here, boy. Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> it, was, it was great for me because I met people from all over the country. They kept, out of the 70 they kept, there was eight of us from Oklahoma. All the rest mm. were from Texas and Alabama and Mississippi and Florida. And Ohio, so I mean, I got to meet guys, and they'd always tell me about what they grew up. But that was where it was. And after after three semesters there, uh, being a defensive player, uh, OU still said I was too small, so I ended up going to Panhandle State, and that's a, uh, that was another of the deals. I went to Central State up there, and they said, "No, you're kind of small. We're gonna have to make you have to be an offensive lineman." And I said, "No, I'm a defensive player. I'm not not, not that. I'm not no dirty lineman." <laughs> so I went to Northwestern. They said, "Well, you got to be. A, you're going to be an offensive lineman. You come here. We'll give you money and everything." And I said, "No." So I went to two other places, and they told me the same story. So finally, I went to Panhandle, and they said, uh, "You come out here, yeah. Well, let's play defense." Sure enough, so I signed my name, and I was on the way. I got there in the first practice. We had the spring ball. I went over to the defensive event, defensive group, and the defense coordinator said, "What are you doing over here? Offensive lines over there." And I said, "Oh man." <laughs> So I came out, I could either quit, get out, and go home. I be an offensive lineman. So I went over there and started two years in offensive line for Van Edel State. But it was a big time. I had fun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it made me what I was. And from there, you know, as far as the life story, man, I got married when I was 20. And it was the greatest decision I ever made. And uh, I started coaching. My first job, I was the head football, the head basketball, head track coach in a school that had 102 students there. Oh, wow. And I was also the disciplinarian. I got there and they gave me a paddle. I said, what am I supposed to do with this? And they said, put it in your back pocket. And if you're out in the hall and there's any kids out there, give them three swats and send them back inside. I said, do I need a witness or documentation or any of that stuff? And they said, well, can't be honest. It don't matter to us. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't look in the hall very much. You know, I didn't want to go out and do that stuff. But that was how it started. And then we won. And, you know, when you win, somebody always calls and says, hey, you know, uh, come on over here. So I went over right. to another job and then won a little bit there. And then called, went over to another place. And then, but then I finally thought I was really smart. You know, I'd won a few ball games, and, you know, the kids were pretty good there at that school. And I probably could still be there today. But, you know, like coaches, you always think you're smarter than you are. So, you, you know, I thought, well, I'll just go and, 
and uh, go to this bigger school. Well, uh-huh. I went down to that school, and, and all of a sudden, that ink pen that I was dry, drawing in long old touchdowns with, I could have had them lines didn't make no first downs anymore and stuff. And I, and that phone that was ringing at once, you know, it went dry. I figured, <laughs> no, no, no more calls. Stop, nobody was calling me. Uh, I thought, man, did I get stupid all of a sudden? <laughs> So I just I just said, heck, I'll go to Texas. So I came went to East Texas, went over there, and like I said, did you know, all that stuff, and had a big time. And, and like I said, would never left. Probably would have never become a big school coach. I really wasn't. I was a small school guy. Uh-huh. I didn't have ambition to be a big school coach. I like knowing that you know, in the seventh grade, that kid's going to be my quarterback in three years at the varsity. Right. You know, I could have all those kids and coming up through. I knew my program. I knew that. You know, I knew that was. But all of a sudden, uh, my wife got sick, and the doctor said, you need to move to Houston. And I picked up a thing they used to call Coach Finder, and there was a place called Magnolia. I'd never heard of it. I picked the phone up, and the guy said, yeah, I need help. And I said, well, I, I need a job. There and you he go. Said, talk to me. We talked about five minutes, and he offered me the job, and I was at Magnolia for about 13 years. Mm. But, uh, you know, that, that's how coaching goes. And then, you know, I got into it, and then uh, I didn't want to go to San Angelo with Ballard, so uh, – Roger Holcamp said, come to Conroe, and I went over to Conroe, and that's where I met you, and, right. and it was there. You got another phone call, and, and sometimes money talks to you, but uh, <laughs> you just go down the road sometimes. But, uh, you know, that, that's you know that's, that's 38 years right there, boiled down in about five minutes. There you, you look go. At, you know, you look at your life, and you will too, that you look at it, and you just say, man, where'd he go? I know. You know it's like that old, you know, uh, song that, Two troubadour, young troubadours. Where I still twenty feel twenty five. I just don't feel it very long. You know? <laughs> still not very long, huh? No, well, I, you know that's yeah, that's the way I am. But I still feel twenty five, just not very long. <laughs> that's good but stuff, yeah. coach. Yeah. Um, and you you were saying let's kind of backtrack a little bit. You were saying like when you went to Magnolia, that's where you hooked up with Coach Ballard. Yeah, when uh-huh. I first went there, there was a guy named James Pullen. Who had played on the Arkansas National Championship team? Great guy, I love working for him. And then uh, he retired and recommended me for the job at, of head football coach at Magnolia. Mm-hmm. And, but I didn't get it. Uh, Bob Blard did, and uh, I went in the first day. He came and I said, "Look, Coach Blard, you know, hey, I know you, you know, you got the job, and I applied for it, so I'm gonna save time. I'm just gonna leave." And he said, "Wait a minute, let's talk. Let's go through a formal interview." So we walked from. We walked, he watched us work out one day and then I, with the kids and stuff. And then I just, we, well, he said, come and walk with me. So we walked down to the other end of the football field and back. When he came back, he kind of talked me into staying one year and being his defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. Well, that one year turned into about five years and then another six years up here in Bryan and stuff. But we just kind of got along pretty good. You know, yeah. it was one of those deals. So, but we had some real good teams. We were able to win the, the Cy Fair District with. Scrubbly bottom old Magnolia kids. One year we, we went for four A to five A, so that was that was it kind of shocked them and it shocked us about as much as it did them. Mm-hmm. But you know, that, that was you know that was where I hooked up with him at. Well, then came there. Yeah, and that's where uh, that's like you said. That's where we met and got a chance yeah. to work with you. And then from there you went to Brian. Brian High School, go Bikes, Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, talk a little bit about your. Uh, your after Brian experience in coaching, if you don't mind. After Brian, uh, after Brian, my wife passed, and I was kind of sitting around the house, and I had a coach named Jay Osborne, who had kind of who had uh, who had been at Brian with us, and he, he had gone off to be the head coach at uh, St. Mary's in Kansas, and he kind of yeah he had coached in Europe, and he got to, you know I kind of had the bug to do something like that, mm-hmm. and he hooked me up with the guy in, in Kempton, Germany named Brian Collier, and Brian and I got together, so uh, over to Germany I went, and I coached in the GFL1, which is the, the top professional German league, oh. it's, it's pretty good football, it's, uh, I put it up there, I mean, they got great kids at each level, but I mean, uh, it's probably below, between somewhere between Sam Houston and, and uh, Tarleton, you know, that Sam, you know, Lone Star Conference type right. stuff, I mean, they got... You get to bring in your two Americans on each side of the ball, and uh, and then uh, you, you got some pretty good players. They go all over. I mean, we had kids from Serbia with an offensive lineman who was huge. We, kid, we had a kid from Denmark on the team. We had a kid from London on the team. Wow. Uh, we had a, 
inside linebacker that played with uh, Nevada Reno. He was all Mountain West. He made me a very good defensive coach. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> it's amazing how that happens, huh? It's amazing how they had a corner that could lock you down from uh, from from uh, from California. So uh, you know, I mean, those those were the great players you had. But going to Cal- going over there to uh, to Germany was really great because it exposed me to new ideas about other places in the world, and they love football. I mean, these kids want to play football. You come off the field, and I mean, you can high-five them, and they're laughing and giggling, and mm-hmm. it just, I mean, they play football for the pure pure joy of football, and they're not kids. They're 21 to 35. Right. I mean, we had a 35-year-old guy that brought up, you know, brought his family out there, and his, you know, his daughter was 12, and, and, you know, his son was 13, and, you know, introduced him to me and stuff like that. But they played the game for the love of the game, and it really gave you some new enthusiasm to go do stuff and enjoy uh-huh. it. And uh, I got to, you know, go around Europe and see lots of old stuff and stuff like that. Uh, so it was it was kind of good, you know. And like I said, they, they were good to me about, you know, because I asked a ton of questions. You know, I'd go on the bus trip and I'd say, what's that, what's that? And I'd point to a castle. I'd say, what's that, what's that, what kind, what kind of church is that? And uh-huh. finally they got ADC, coach, ADC. Another damn church, another damn castle. Just leave us alone and look out the window, you know? <laughs> but they were good to me about all that stuff. Because I, I don't ask you more questions. It was great. I mean, it was great fun. Yeah. And they were great. I mean, we won We won more than we lost. We had a big time. And I'm getting ready to go back to southern France this time to coach the Argonauts of Aix-en-Provence. Still getting used to this French stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm leaving, uh, leaving January 18th to go do that, so I'll be all excited about some of that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just fun to go in there. You know, they're all excited. We're, we Skype like twice a week with the head coach, and he mm-hmm. wants to know about this and that. And he wanted me to know if I had a playbook. I said, I don't really have a playbook. I said, well, can you send me stuff? Well, I kind of sent some stuff out to him, and, you know, he came back and said, well, I don't know about this. I said, well, I'll explain it when I get there then. Just keep yeah. Working. But, uh, you, you know, know a little bit about what you're doing, huh? <laughs> I know what I'm doing, you know. I know I've done this before, you know. I, yeah. I tried to explain. This is not my first rodeo, okay? I, I've been to the fair before, so we do this when I get there. Well, uh, Coach, what, what are three things that you have accomplished in your life uh, that you're proud of? Man, you know, that, that's a really <laughs> tough thing. The first accomplishment is probably being married for 40 years. You know, so I came up to marry the love of my life right away. Next would be my two kids. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, that's credit to But those, I got them through college, and they're grown people. They got families. They're self-supported. Um, they're not coming to dad for money. Yeah. You know, they, they got lots of jobs. And, that, that, you know, that may not be something, but it was, you know, you kind of feel good for yourself when you say, okay, that was a check. Your kids turned out okay. Yeah. You know, nice relationship. It didn't work. Now, the third one, man, I don't know, you know, I guess just getting up going to work and having a job for 38 years. You're right. Because, you know, I didn't ever have a job. Mm-hmm. It was, it's kind of hard to say. I got up every morning and went to school, but it wasn't a job. And You're I think right. that's, you know, yeah, people ask me, well, what's a successful person? A successful person is somebody that gets up, goes to work, supports their family, and comes home. That's a success. No doubt. It ain't, I mean, I got trophies somewhere in my house in a box that says I was the, like the, the coach of the year in baseball one year mm-hmm. when I won a state championship. I'm the smartest guy. But, uh, you know, that, that, I'd have to look, probably take me 45 minutes to find a trophy. Right. But, you know, was I more successful than the, that, that pulp wood hauler that hauled that wood just got his kids fed to school every day? I don't know. Right. That, that's what to me was a success. And I tried to teach the kids that I had that just to win today. Yes. If you could just win today, tomorrow will take care of itself. No doubt. Win today. And, and sometimes that's hard. I mean, I've been in that room with that kid, and he don't see a way to tomorrow. Right. The problem in front of him is so big, he can't see tomorrow. And I said, well, let's just deal with today. Break it down a little by little. And if we could just win today... We can go tomorrow. Yeah, and that doesn't necessarily game because that ain't going to happen. But if you get out there and give us effort, we can win this day with you. Yeah. And that's probably the 
the thing that most success I try to teach was just win today. You know, and, and you know, you, it's just like you, Chip. There's a hundred stories. A couple years ago, I was walking to Walmart with one of my with my son-in-law, and we're out there, and all of a sudden, this kid starts yelling, "Coach Patrick, Coach Patrick!" And runs across, hugs me. Uh-huh. I said, "Hey, seen you." And uh, I said, "Yeah, what are you up to?" I graduated. I said, "Well, that's great." He said, "Coach, I'd have never done it if you hadn't kept me in football." I said, "Well, I, you know," and that was the hook for him to come to school. Right. With the big sports, and the bad thing was when he left, he never played. He was a kid, that, you know, junior year. I told him, I said, "Look, I'll never get you in a game. I can't do it. You're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You're not fast enough. You'll get hurt. I'll get fired if I put you in there." <laughs> I said, you "Still be on the team, and I'll, you know, you can still." Be part of the team and come and, and we'll get you through the school. And that was him. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of kids that you affect, but you don't go out and say, I'm going to save that kid. You right. know, it's like the old, you know, you go, but you save that one. And you didn't really try, but somewhere along the road, he, he attached himself to you. Yeah. And you say, and there's lots of them out there that just kind of go that way. You don't know, hey, how am I going to save him or what's going to happen or, but, you went out of your way to help the kid, and, and he became something. Because and that's kids everything you say. I've told you that before. No doubt. I've had kids come back 20, 30 years and say, Coach, I remember when you said da 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 And I go, holy cow, I told you that. <laughs> Man, I, that was old school stuff there. <laughs> you, know, you know, but, you know, they remember all that stuff. And, you know, so – and, uh, when I was at Magnolia, we did uh, kind of a road to the winter circle stuff. We're taking kids, teaching them how to shake hands, look you in the eye. Yes. We, you know, we, we tried to incorporate that a little bit at Conroe, and we did it here at Bryan. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching kids to sit down because not everybody has a goal. They don't sit down. What's your goal? And then how to set a goal. And that'll be a, a short-term goal, a long-term goal. You know, what do you want to be? You know, do you want to graduate from high school? Well, you got to come to school every day before you can graduate from high school. You know, you got to right. do those little steps. So those are things that we tried. And I thought that was probably, you know, like if I want to say a success, it was probably helping other people win the day would be my right. third success. Good deal, and, Coach. And, and, I, and I think you have, you know, you just, just like you said, you know, you just, you do what you do because that's what you do. That's the right thing to do. And you don't yeah. realize that, you know, you do, you know, impact so many lives. You know, and you know, like coming into it, like my deal was if I could just help one, you yeah. know, then I, I feel accomplished, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, like now, you know, after being in it for so long, I could walk in the dressing room after practice and look at a kid and say, oh, something's wrong. So you can sit down with right. that kid after practice and one on one say, you know, ask him what's wrong, you know, and might be his girlfriend's left him or he's having trouble, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's stuff like this. And some kids, we had a kid that was a good football player for us, but his dad lost his job, and he said, Coach, I can't play football my senior year. And he was going to be, he's a, you know, all-district player. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep you in athletic period, though, and you're going to sit in every meeting with me. Right. And you're going to, but after school, you can go home. You know, and he said, okay. But, you know, he, he, he had a job. Right. Pretty soon. After about two weeks, you know, all of a sudden he's coming to practice after school. And I said, what, what, what's the deal? And he said, well, coach, I'm eligible and, you know, I'm in the meetings and I want to play. So I said, okay. But, you know, it would have been so easy just to cut that kid loose and throw yeah, him away. And not work and, with him. Yeah. But he ended up staying with us. And, you know, not that we needed him to be a football player because we were winning without him. But he needed to be part of something. Because once you graduate from high school, a lot of times kids go off and and they, they, they go off in separate ways. And they think that the high school was their, you know, like the old Bruce Springsteen story, uh, glory days. Yes. Well, I don't want the best thing that ever happened in your life to be when you were a junior. You know, there needs to be more. <laughs> but, you know, we try to tell them that. But you got to get them to be a senior and graduate yes. Yes. so they can go off and be more. So, you know, those are, you know, those, you had Kids like that, and I've had kids where you just keep them and keep them, and they'll graduate. But it takes, you know, you know, it takes a village sometimes. It takes a whole staff to get one sometimes. You've had those. We had a bunch of those in Conroe. It took a whole staff to get that kid out. Of, get yeah. That kid to it was good, you know, just like we talked about, you know, being good guys. It was also a lot of good, good people in the building 
you know, that yes. really just jump through hoops to help kids. You yeah, know, that was when we got to Conroe. Conroe had been, you know, they'd been through three head coaches in, right. in three. I mean, those kids came up Christmas time. I remember you were there with us, and the kid came up. He shook our hands and said, "Y'all coming back?" Right. And I, I said, oh, "Yeah." He said, "Whoa." You think the coaches don't come back after Christmas, you know? <laughs> I go, yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> you know, you used to tell them the story, but you're a tiger, always a tiger. You know, all that stuff. But, you know, it was, you know, we, we tried to indoctrinate them into being, being a tiger. That was yes, sir. Special. And, you know, and, I, and it, was, it was special times. Yeah. You know, it was a hard time, but it was a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, who can remember the bus, who can forget the bus rides or, or some of those other things. But it was great, you know. Those, the kids weren't the best, but, but we were able to get out of them on most of what they had. Right. So they could you know? Yeah. yeah, they gave us everything they had to give. Yes, they did. And, you know, and, and I think that was that was their their testament and, and a tribute to, you know, the coaching staff that was there to do that. No and, you know, and, you know, we've had staffs that, you know, that, that didn't, you know, that, that had, you know, hadn't had a whole lot of ability, but they, they had the ability we were able to get it out of. Mm-hmm. And to go into playoffs and stuff, and you know, when you come out, you look over there, and you go, "Whoa," you know, and and stuff like that. I know one time, uh, Bum Phillips, believe it or not, came up and listened to me talk football one day. Guy caught him up, thought I knew something, so he brought Bum up here with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, you know, I diagrammed all I could, all my tricky plays, and I make big O's and big X's. And stuff. <laughs> They were spitting the cup, looked around, and finally he said, yeah, you got a good plan, coach. You're okay. You, just, you need to get better players. <laughs> you, know, you got the best player you win. He said, when I had Roe Campbell, I was the best, I, I was the best coach. <laughs> it's, it's that way. You just got to take your kids and coach a dog out of them and, and have fun doing it. Don't worry. And, and this was probably one of the things that took me a while to learn. When I had really good teams, I didn't enjoy them. Yeah. You know, because – because I was always worried, oh, my gosh, we got to do this. we got to do that. We gotta, I don't know I tell Ty and some of these other guys are coaching. You know, I said, you better just relax and enjoy it and have fun with the coaches yeah. and have fun with those kids. I said, because you're on a rare, you know, when you're winning, it's rare air. You don't right. get those all the time. So, uh, you know, that was one of the things that, that I learned to enjoy, you know, big time. And, you know, I'm still, you know, this Facebook's a good thing for something. It lets me keep up with all them old-time players I had. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that is when they show me their pictures, they got old. You know? You did. I, I, I did. But they did. But they did. <laughs> yeah. Those cats are 50 years old now. I'm going, whoa. <laughs> you show me pictures of grandkids. That, that's not right. You shouldn't have that. Uh, yeah. Come on. Oh, man. I got a problem the other, you know, the last time or something, you know? Yeah. You're still <laughs> 25, not for long, though. Yeah. Not long. I still feel 25. That's kind of me going to France. I'll get over there and feel 25 for about a day or two. And then, oh. That's uh, good stuff. I know you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, as far as the consistency of just going to work every day and do your job as a success. You know, yeah. can you, what, what's your definition, like official definition of success? Man, you know, that's that's the hardest thing I could, could think of. You know, are you a success? And I think, you know, I don't, you know, I, looked, I thought about that today a little bit when I was driving, and I thought, man, success. You know, that success to me is just, you know, if you teach kids to do that, kind of win the day like we talked about a while ago. Mm-hmm. To me, that's that's a success. And then it, uh, if you look down the road, somebody asked me how many baseball games or football games I've been around to win, I couldn't tell you. Right. I, I never kept track. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't a goal for me. It was just okay. Let's win as many as we can, and let's let's turn out a better person on at that end of the deal. You know, we well, right. don't want fit throwers, you know, stuff like that. But you know, sometimes it's hard to teach a kid to shake their hands after they lose. Yes, you know, everybody can be a winner. You know, win a winner chicken dinner. I got a five year old granddaughter that I mean, I play Uno with her, and she's going to do that to me every time she wins. And, you know, of course, I'd probably do it back to her, so that's okay too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Oh, oh man! So but you gotta enjoy winning. You know? Got to, got to. That, that, that's the deal. I try to. We have, believe it or not, we won a game in Round Rock when I was at Bryan, like the third year here. Well, the kids that had come up, they hadn't won any JV games and stuff like that. Well, they got to be seniors. We lost the first two games, and then all of a sudden, we won a game in Round Rock. Walked in the dressing room, and they're all sitting there like, "Huh? What do we do now?" 
Yeah. So man, I'll start jumping around, go, yeah, we won, we won, all right. You know, and run around the room, high fiving and stuff. <laughs> and then Art comes in and looks at me and says, Coach, I don't know how to celebrate. So he's doing the same thing, running around. And then pretty soon they get up, throw some Gatorade on us, and we all run around. <laughs> And then they, they realize, all right, yeah, let's enjoy winning. I said, boys, it's, it was losing fun. They go, no. I said, let's enjoy and celebrate the win. No and, you know, sometimes teach them. It's like, you know, Conroe, we had to teach them, you know, how to ride a bus, how to do this, and how to do that the Conroe way. Well, you know, sometimes you got to teach kids everything, but, you know, just so that they enjoy it. Right. Put them in the right position to enjoy the moment. Yeah, enjoy the moment. Enjoy life and go through it. You know, you just got to savor it up. And, uh, you know, that's, that's probably what I do the best is just kind of savor where I'm at and you have a big time. What What do you think it takes to achieve success, Coach? You know, that's the tough thing because, you know, I've started out and I've had to be on staffs with guys that were the great X's and old guys. Man, you could put something on the board net with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've uh, been guys that, you know, that could get out on the field and, you know, work on techniques and all those things that could, could get, you know, knew all the stuff that could do that. And, uh, but, you know, they never could win. They never could get the kid to buy into you. So I, I think there's something in there as a coach, and I don't know what it is, but I think, you, you know, the kid understands that you got to care about them first. Right. You know, you're just not X or an O. you got to sit down and buy and say, okay, what, you know, I know I want you to do this, but what do you want from me? Do you want me to go up and help you with your grades? Okay. Do you want me to call your mom and take you home at night? You know, okay. Right. Do you want me to come and get you in the morning? Okay. I mean, you know, there's 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 stuff like that. Justin Smith can We had a kid here started school one time, and uh, his coach can't go to school. I'm not going to school, and he went through two days. And I said, went to this house, and I'm sitting there. Why? He said, I don't have a fresh haircut. I said, I got Coach Smith. He's got his clippers at school. He'll get you a haircut. <laughs> and well, I don't have no new shoes. I said, I'll get, I have new shoes. I went up to the cross-country coach. I said, I need a pair of nine, nine and a half right now. You know, so we got a call Justin. Justin, I need to be out of the field house. He came, what is it? What's working, Justin? You got to give him a fresh cut. He said, I got my clip. Hey, gave that kid that kid a good haircut, put him a new pair of shoes. Boom, what? First day of school. But, I mean, you got to you gotta go the extra mile sometimes for kids. No Whether doubt. Whether it be than that or you know you know when parents night and their mom and dad don't show up and, and they're embarrassed because no one's there yeah say so, hey I'll, I'll be glad you know my, my son didn't come so i walk you be my son tonight there you, go. you know all that stuff home visits where you go out and you eat that piece of pie that his mama offers you and it tastes like it tastes great it's the best <laughs> pie i've ever eaten <laughs> hang on chip what minute <laughs> it's okay uh, but you know, it's just that you know, it's that for you. You just gotta, you just gotta go and let them know. It's those thousand and one things you do. Yeah. To make that you be a success with the kid, to where you you go in and tell a joke. You know, you know, you go in and it's hot. He's like, you know, anybody have anything to say? We had to deal with Bar. You know, your kid come in and the last day or two days would always go, man, coach. He'd go through all this stuff that we had to do. You know, anybody have a question? I'd raise my hand. Can we go swimming today instead? <laughs> <laughs> and then the kids would all look around and go, yeah, coach, yeah, coach, can we go swimming instead? And he'd always go, yeah, let's go swimming. You know? <laughs> That's <laughs> so, good stuff, know, coach. We'll go swimming with the first time. And you know, they went out and we'd have always have a great practice, come back by the swimming pool, jump in. Yeah. And, you know, it broke up. And everybody, you know, it just made it fun. And you got to have, you know, if it's all work, you know, and it's, and it's coaching job, I know you. You go and you want your routine and you don't want to break routine. But sometimes you just got to, you know, tell a joke to the kids right. and, and have some fun with them so that, you know, so that they want to be there as much as you want to be there. And I think that was, you know, I tried to provide those kids, hey, I like being here today, you know. Right. I'm going to be here for y'all and, and I hope y'all are here for us. You but, know? you know, all of that that you explained, Coach, you know, um, you know, as far as having fun and winning the day and, you know, making relationships, you know, and going the extra mile, you know, uh, yeah. I, I can truly say that I've witnessed those things with you, you know, and, it, and, yeah. and I'm very fortunate yeah. to have yeah. done that. And, you know, when, at the end of the day, when you, when you do those things, uh, you, you get that in return and not that you're trying yes. to do anything to get like what we do, we do it because we're fortunate 
and we love what we do, you know, but yeah. in return, you, was, you get that back. Yeah, I mean, you know, if a kid called me and said, Coach, I'm, I'm a big tree in Willis, I don't have a ride. Yeah. Say, okay, I'll be there. You know, I'm on the you way. Ask, you know, ask why, how come, or what's your problem, or you, you just go pick them up, bring them on down, visit with them, say, how's your mom, how's you doing, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, I, I, I think that's the deal is, is you know, sometimes – People try to help them, and then they, they try to bang the kid. I mean, uh, if a kid needs help, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say, well, why didn't you do it yourself? Why didn't you do that? Right. Well, if he had done it, if he, he might not have the, the, the skills or the, or the people skills or the social skills to know to do that. Right. And you have to teach him. Right. You can't assume it. You have to teach him. No, no. Don't, don't assume nothing. Now, you have to teach that kid. When you go in there, you need to teach the kid everything from the day one. Don't assume that the kid knows how to do anything, or don't assume that the kid don't assume that the kid wants to win. Don't assume that he knows how to tackle or, or knows mm -hmm. how to catch the ball. I mean, it, it might not. He might be the greatest Xbox player in the world, but he, <laughs> he might not know what a third of the field is, you know. <laughs> so you, you have to go out, and mark off a third. You say, "Hey, get to the flats," you know. And he looks around and says, "It's all kind of flat out here, coach. Where's the flats?" <laughs> okay, so I get cones, and you have to mark off the flats. Okay. You know, they didn't know. You know, it's all, you know, those, it's all flat, huh? It's all flat out of here, Coach. There ain't no flats to me. You know, so it's it's that way. So I don't know, you know, but it's, it's and I think that's what's the fun of teaching football is you yeah. teach it, and, and they're going to tell you honestly what they feel. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, you know, I, I had a linebacker came over the sideline and I mean, he was taking the ISO on and just killing him. Came over the ISO and he finally said, Coach, I think that hurts an awful lot. <laughs> I said, Can you just do it a little more, though? Can you just do it a little more? <laughs> he said, All right, I'll do what I got, but I'll raise you, I'll raise it when they whip me. I said, Okay. And when they whip you, let me know. But he went back and did it. But I mean, you know, it was sitting there and talking to him on the sideline. You've had those talks before where, you know, and, you know, you don't want to let it be a vote. You say, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're going to get it <laughs> done. <laughs> they might not get back out. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the fun of, the, you know, the game. And, again, it's every day of building relationships with them. Right. You know, from, from doing all that stuff to, you know, sometimes you got to be the guy that runs, makes them run sprints. But when you get over, you hug them and walk them in with them and you have a big time. So I don't, you know, you're talking about success, man. It's just, it's just I don't know what one thing is, you know. Yeah. It's, it's it's being, you know, if you're like you and, and I was fortunate that I mean I love going to work, you know, and and maybe that made me a success, you know, because I, I, you know, when I got to work, I was happy, I was right. fun, I wanted to help kids, and uh, you know, football was a way to do it, you know. Whether now again, you know, when I first started out, believe it or not, Chip, I was a girls basketball coach, I was a girls softball coach, mm -hmm. I was a girls volleyball. Coach, and I quickly realized that I don't think I need to be that. I need to hire me a guy that can do that. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, those were, those were a long time ago in small schools where they want a team and they don't have a coach to do it. That coach you do it. Now, if y'all, if we need a team, I'll, I'll coach you. Okay, we'll go find out what the rules are and we'll play this game. But uh, that's uh, you know, and, and you, you get kids and and it's it's funny because you know. I had a kid at Magnolia run fast. He was a senior and wanted to hang around with his other buddies on the baseball team. So I said, okay, you'll run bases for us. All right. So we're in the Waller tournament. He's, I sent him in to run. He's on second base. The ball's hit to the outfield. I hold my hand up as a stop sign. Well, I hadn't coached him what that meant. So he uh -oh. came by and just slapped, give it a high five. They threw him out at home by about 10 yards. And I said, hey, <laughs> did you see that? Did you see me have my hand up? He said, yeah, I wondered why you did that. I said, yeah, that's right. That's my fault there. It wasn't your fault for you to throw that. I should have coached you up what, what holding my hand in there. So, you know, you can't assume anything. But I laughed and hugged him. I said, now, yeah, if you do that, that means stop. I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. You know, I didn't scream and yell at him out for not for me not ever teaching him that. Yeah, that's my fault. I didn't teach him that. That's my fault. I didn't teach him that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't tell you, you know, it's one of them assumed deal. Yeah, I thought he might know, but he did. You know, but he's a great kid, and now he's a fireman in Montgomery, so. There you, you go. Know, I can't, you know, so he's, he's a great kid. But, it, you know, it, you know, and when you coach a long time, you got a hundred stories. And you can, 
you know, and it comes to the point where you can chew the kid out for something he didn't know. Right. But it really wasn't that way. It was your fault for not coaching him, me exactly. not telling him. Exactly. So, and it made, you know, he didn't feel bad. Now, the other kids in the dugout, they were rolling over laughing. But, uh, you know, that, that, was, that was a different deal, but it was good. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for all the things that you've done, that you do. And uh, thanks for interviewing with us on this episode of the Success Chronicles. I was really looking forward to this one. I don't know if I gave you anything to be successful about. It's yeah. just, just win the day, I guess. You can win the day and, and have a smile at the end of the day. There it is. I know that. I think I think I realized that, you know, uh, about winning the day when my wife was real sick. And, then, you know, you can't say, hey, let's look five miles. You know, let's look on down the road. Get it seats. Right. Because, you know, when it, that stuff, you know, you look and you go, well, there ain't no end of the road. It's right here. It's right so now. So you say, okay, let's take and And enjoy and win today. And if you can do that, then we'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. And that, that, that carried me through some tough times. That help you get through, huh? Help you get through. And that's You a- know, and you look back, man, that must have been hard. And, you know, people say, that was kind of tough, wasn't it? I said, well, it wasn't easy, but. You know, I just took it one day at a time, and, you know, all of a sudden, the next day came up. I go, yep, made it through that one. Let's get another one. And you just win the next day. There it is. So, well, we appreciate you, you, Coach. Hey, I appreciate you, Chip. Keep the good work up. Uh, I don't ever expect to see this on the TV or on the Internet. But, but uh, you know, be like that goldfish. Don't be little. Get that big pond, boy. Hey, yeah. yeah. Hey, tell us that story, Coach. Tell us the goldfish story. Uh, this is one of those things I found, you know, when I, when I sit around the house, my, my son and my daughter-in-law, they get on me all the time because I'm always watching Oprah, or not Oprah, but Rachel Ray, or all these TV shows, and I'm always coming up with a ton of trivia stuff. Well, I came up with this, I found in a book, that if you're a goldfish, and you keep that little goldfish in that same small bowl, it'll always be a small goldfish. Mm-hmm. But the bigger bowl that goldfish gets in, the bigger that goldfish gets. You put it out in a big pond, you're going to have a big, big goldfish. So don't limit yourself to being a little goldfish in a little pond. If you get a chance, get in that big pond, see if you can be a good big goldfish. There it is right there. Go so, get in that big pond and be a big goldfish. Go get in the big pond. And, you know, hey, they play football on the other side of the pond too. So don't limit yourself. And don't, you know, and, and don't think, you know, I tell these people, I tell these coaches our age, I say, you know, you got a valuable thing. You're an older person, but you got 38 years experience. I told Crow that. I said, Crow, you got 30 years experience. I mean, how does that help you sell furniture? I said, you need to give something back. So I ain't got on me that. But, you know, it's going on about, I go to Europe because it's fun. I still got experience. I go over there and I trade it. You know, they they feed me and let me hang around. And and I do football. Mm -hmm. Teach them what flats are and quarters and stuff like that. But, 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 you know, that's, uh, you know, they want to learn football. I mean, they want to know everything. So uh, that that's what it comes about. So I th- I think you know sometimes we're mentioning it when when people get older and they say, well I can't do it anymore. I think people older people get now fight the classroom every day. Eh, I don't know if I want to do that. But you know football every day is fun. I see you know other coaches do it. And it's I think there's people out there that can give back some quality time, right? And maybe leadership to the to other people. And I try, like I said, man, I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. I want some young coaches to be smarter than me so that we can all do it together. Because if I'm the smartest one in the room, you know, y'all need to contribute some more stuff. I need to get y'all some more clinics. You know, get some ideas. You know, it's a deal. I'd always listen to some of the stuff that the other cats would do. But it, Chip, I appreciate you. And I hope you it too, helped you a little bit. It did help me a lot. Well, and, uh, Well, thank you guys for joining us for this episode of the Success Chronicles. We'll see you next time. God bless.